بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی نیم از سلمد مسعود ہیپی رمضان I know it's 16th of Ramadan and I'm a bit late to the party but nonetheless have a blessed Ramadan and I pray that your ibadahs are accepted. So um, um, the topic of my video is that how to submit a VAT return in zero or I have watched my previous videos they would know that I have uh, prepared one video which was submitted before the making tax digital so Uh, where I um, showed you guys how to submit a VAT return and uh, but in this time this is like a next step of that video where I'm gonna show you how um, to submit that through zero accounting software and um, uh, I, I was I was preparing actually what happened was that I have submitted the VAT return already um, and I recorded uh, along the way but the mic was not working so all of my hard work went down the drain but never mind I'll, I'm just gonna take you through the process and the step I've done uh, that mm, to which will enable you to submit the VAT return on your own so that yeah let's just get straight into into the video so as you can see on the left side we have um, a dashboard uh, which is a zero accounting dashboard basically I've been using this software for some time. It's a very uh, user-friendly software. This section here is uh, where your bank feed appears. Uh, apparently, there's a problem with my bank feed. Um, I think the connection is broken. But I do have, uh, um, I have had all, since I've submitted the VAT on, all right, already, so I had all the transactions that were required for the period. Um, the case in point is the period from 1st of December 2022 to 28th of February 2023. There are a few items still outstanding which are post uh, um, that VAT period. I'll show you how we reconcile them. And this is basically the first step of uh, uh, of submitting submitting this VAT return so in these items these are basically those items which come straight from your bank account um, so you need to reconcile it to identify whether they are um, so whether they are payments or receipts and uh, if they are payments have you paid any VAT on them and if they are any receipts you have or you have also collected whether or not you have collected um, like a VAT sellers VAT on it so um, there are only three transactions but I can take you uh, I think the principle is the same so you just need to identify what sort of uh, transaction is it and it is and uh, and basically uh, what are the details behind it and where you need to post it so first of all this first one it says um, the date of the transaction I know it's post um, the VAT period but it was a similar sort of transactions I had I can show you what I've done here in the account transactions but let's just go through this first so you can see this is like a PayPal payment um, and you can click on that to find out more details about it there's a transaction amount which you can see here as well you basically spent six pounds um, and there's a reference number if you don't know what it is you can always log back into your paypal account and find out where did you pay that and you can get more details about it but anyway i know on that particular instance that what this payment relates to so on this right side of this you'll see there are three tabs like match it create it and discuss it so in the creation section it, it asks you who it is that you've made this payment what it is and you can pretty much put a description and whether or not there was a VAT on that so in this particular case I bought something from AliExpress um, so I mentioned I, I had already created the, this account or you can simply type that in and it will create the person's or entity's name and where you have spent it um, this is actually something uh, this was actually some sort of an expenditure I made um, and some sort of inventory I bought um, so I'm just gonna say it is cost of goods sold uh, so you can pretty much pick that one up 
and it will automatically as you can see this call center which I had created um, had 20% uh, VAT on expenses um, set against it but uh, I know for a fact that only experts I didn't pay any VAT on it so I'm just gonna click on it and I'm gonna say it was a no VAT on it and I can mention that they were a good spot and I think that's pretty much ready to click OK and it will ultimately create an entry. So this account here is a zero created account, um, zero created uh, call center. You can create your own as well, um, which I'll show you in a minute when I do manual channels in the second half of this video. Um, so yeah, um, I think this one is ready to post it. So I'm just going to click OK on that. And there you go. One thing I'm going to tell you, and when there are like a list of transactions, at the moment we have only three, when there are a list of transactions, you can click refresh on it. And what will happen is that all the PayPal values, and you'll see in this particular case, that this second one is also PayPal one, PayPal payment, is it has automatically picked up AliExpress and the good spot. However, in this particular case, this is not uh, this is not something I think this is something I paid to Shopify for the monthly subscription. I already created this Shopify account in my in my directory, and I'm gonna click on there on the drop down and find the IT expenses. Um, um, IT, or you can just simply type it in as well. Um, you can simply type in IT and yeah and there we go I'm going to say it's a subscription subscription paid again there was no VAT on that um, because <clears throat> yes yeah, so Shopify is not a VAT registered entity so I'm just I'm gonna click on no VAT and just gonna click OK and there we go we're done with this one the third one is the pack link so it's like a uh, the, for those of you who use is eBay uh, for bought postage on Packlink eBay platform. So, um, so this is 2.35 is the um, shipping costs. So on the postage cost. So <clears throat> I've already put up um, Packlink name on a. I know it is. I've created this code for eBay postage. Under the postage section, there there's a general postage uh, call center as well. If you want to identify specific postage like eBay postage, you can create your own call center under that same category, or you can simply put into the postage account with a description that eBay post it is an eBay postage. So yeah, it's up to you whichever way you want to do it. It's fairly straightforward to create new chart of accounts. I can show you in a separate video or a separate snippet if you want me to. Just leave a comment in the. Um, in the comment section and I'll uh, pick that one up um, so yeah uh, if you look at this here um, it, this account is has a standard setting of or by default setting of reverse charge expenses because these are reverse charges uh, for those of you who are aware of uh, who are not aware of reverse charges basically different from the standard VAT so the purpose of the reverse charge is that it goes in and out it just recognizes the VAT element well, actually there is no VAT on it it's just an in and out uh, from your uh, from your transaction so you don't have any cash impact uh, that you don't basically pay anything or you receive anything on that behalf it's just from a from, it's from a recording perspective you need to record in your when you are submitting your VAT return so in this particular case these are um, reverse charges uh, some of the Amazon sale, selling fees, in fact all of the selling fees and uh, be associated fees are also reverse charge uh, expend, expenditures so you need to be very sure you need to make sure that you have um, when you when you account for those expenditures you classify them as reverse charging expenditures so here we go um, I think this is ready as well so I'm just gonna click OK on that and as you can see all of my uh, like uh, transactions have been reconciled I'm just gonna go through some of the ones I've done it for this uh, VAT return and as you can see um, these are all the transactions that have been um, if you look on the right have been reconciled already 
um, some of them have these uh, credits as well um, like uh, this is a C credit so I do I do have some RTC um, online shopping account online seller account sorry uh, where I get uh, sell some products so this uh, this is the amount that I received through RTC um, same is the case with this Amazon one the payment that I received from Amazon and so on and so forth so all of these have been reconciled in a similar fashion um, I think I um, yeah it's basically as you're telling me it's coming through the sources the bank feed and uh, the status is reconciled so yeah pretty much I've reconciled all the transactions so this is what you need to do in the first step of your process you refresh your bank feed um, uh, it will import all the uh, transactions from your bank account into uh, into zero and then you can you need to reconcile these one by one um, so that uh, you capture all the uh, receipts and payments that have been made through directly to your bank account so that's that's that and then the, there's a section down here where it says it's the account swatch list um, and uh, um, so basically these are all the accounts that i've created and there are some standard chart of accounts as well but i've created my own just to for perspective that i uh, i want to identify all the amazon sales at c sales ebay sales separately so you can see there are some amazon accounts ebay accounts and at c accounts um, um, these are fairly straightforward. All you need to know is where, which section or which category uh, you need to create that particular account. For example, Amazon sales account needs to be under the sales of income and uh, expenditure report or profit and loss statement. Hmm. So profit and loss account. So this account needs to be created under, under the sales section. Um, so yeah, and uh, so that's what it is. Um, uh, this was the first step of the process. The second step of the process is that uh, you need to recognize or identify the sales that you've made uh, outside, which has obviously nothing to do with this bank account. So things like your Amazon account, for example, um, because Amazon and Etsy and eBay, all of them take out their fees from your revenue and then transfer you the remaining amount. Um, so you what you will see in this in, in the first step of the process are those transactions which coming from amazon or ebay but um uh, you still need to recognize the revenue that you made during the period um so for those of you who already watched my previous video you will find that i've taken to the process of uh, how to pick out the reports from amazon and, and etsy I think I think I must have done about Amazon. I'm not sure about whether I've done that at C1, but um, this is similar. Similar is the process in this one. So basically, go into the business reports in the Amazon, um, put the on like date, for example, first of December to third twenty eighth of February twenty twenty three, and it will list out all the transactions. You can download the report, and it will come out something in the form of this Excel sheet. Um, so I know I've put a very small window. Um, I just want to show everything in one place and so that you guys can uh, identify what is happening. So in this particular case, you can see this is the report from Amazon. It lists down uh, all the dates and the types of the transaction, um, the product sales, the product sales tax, postage credit, shipping, and so on and so forth. Um, so, I mean, what you need to do is if you click on see what you need to do is you need to filter this I think on on this and what you will find is yeah if you just filter on this you'll find that uh, this it is called orders refunds the service fees service fee will have the transportation costs and the subscription the monthly subscription costs uh, be inventory fees any adjustments and bank transfers which Amazon has made uh, for the money after deducting your after deducting uh, his fees, its fees like selling fees or FBA fees, etc. Um, so yeah, it has all, everything in there. I don't, I don't want to take you through all the calculations because I've already done in my previous video. I'll put on the link below, uh, and you can follow the process from there. And if you're still confused about how to uh, pick 
pick up the relevant information just let me know in the comments I'll now do something about it okay so coming to this um, so this, continuing with the second part of the video basically um, once you have all the information from the Amazon account and if you have see sales you have similar sort of story you have similar sort of process and same is the case with eBay as well um, uh, everyone gives you a financial statement or a business report uh, and you can pick out the relevant information and then what you need to do is you need to post a manual journal into zero and the way to post the manual journal there are two there are a couple of ways to do it basically um, and I'll show you both actually so you go into the accounting section you come down right at the bottom and there's a section called manual journal so you go into that journals I've already posted now for those of you who have not uh, posted any journals in the past you will have obviously you won't have any list of journals what you need to do is you click on new journal and then this window will appear and what you need to do is you need to put a narration for example a sales journal whatever uh, you put a date so the date should be the last day of the VAT period the case in point is 28th of February um, so in uh, our discussion we we will posting a straight line journal here so <clears throat> and then the next section is amount are there are few ways of doing it like no tax tax inclusive or tax exclusive I'll come to you when I show my journals what I've done that what each of these mean but for, for the sake of point that this is what it is uh, you put a description in you, you choose an account the account should be whatever account you think is suitable tax rate will be calculated based upon this section here um, and then whether it's a debit or a credit value and once you're ready uh, if, you, if, you, if you're short of any line you can add new lines here as well you can save as draft for later uh, and if you're happy with the numbers you can go right away and post it <coughs> so that's all that's one way of doing it and then the second way of doing it is uh, basically uh, if you have already posted a journal in the past so save your time you can pretty much click on the previous journal and what you'll see is that you can click on journal options and you can repeat the same journal you can reverse it you can avoid it you can copy it and you can edit it whichever way you want to do it in this particular case uh, what I normally do is I just copy it so it will start let me start into a uh, like I start a new journal I can change the description here um, and change the values accordingly and then just click on post and that's how it's done um, but I'll, I'm not gonna do this I've already posted this journal I'm just gonna take you through each of those lines what does that mean where it is coming from and what is the tax rate etc so I'm just gonna go back into it uh, so that I don't wanna, don't change anything mistakenly um, okay, so go back into that and you see there's a narration for the particular period There's a date which is last day of the VAT period and the amounts are tax exclusive. So I have changed, I have clicked on tax exclusive because um, I mean you can do tax inclusive as well. The difference is that this amount here is a net amount with tax inclusive you need to have uh, the full amount like uh, your sales and the sales tax uh, column from the from the Excel file I showed you earlier. So what will, what will um, um, uh, zero will do is that it will calculate or it will calculate um, like twenty percent of the VAT on it. In this particular case, you can see I put the net amount in, and I mentioned that this, these sales that will have twenty percent VAT on that, and it it will automatically calculate the twenty percent VAT, and it will put it down here. So all the credit sales, credit entries and the sales on a and which has VAT on them as well this is the sum of those transactions and this is the debit entries so I'm just gonna take it through in each of them one by one so first of all this is Amazon sales um, that's how much I sold net of sales tax in the period December 2022 to February 2023 um, this is the Amazon sales account you can post into the sales account directly but I have created a separate account for Amazon of eBay and Etsy so you can do the same with yourself if you wish to do so the next is shipping credits so these are those accounts basically or those values which um, um, for Amazon anything under 20 pounds 
Uh, if you're not a Prime member, you tend to pay uh, a certain shipping fee. So that shipping fee paid by the customer comes to you yourself along with the VAT on that. Um, so what you need to do is basically uh, it will be treated as your income and you need to pay VAT on that. So this is what it is. Um, so these are some of those like FBA inventory reimbursement. So there were some FBA adjustments, inventory adjustments uh, by Amazon. Um, this is the value of them. Same goes with the selling fees and FBA fees. So FBA selling and subscription and storage and transport. So these are uh, all the expenditures which are reverse charge expenditures. So when you look on to your, when you go into invoicing and look at your um, selling fee details, you'll see that Amazon mentioned that this, these expenses needs to be reverse charged while submitting a VAT return. So basically all of these expenditures are in and out on the VAT return, you don't pay anything on additional uh, on top of these. Uh, if you're not a VAT customer or VAT seller, you probably have a standard VAT return on them and there will be another 20% added on that, which you will be paying. But you obviously you won't be able to reclaim since you are not a VAT seller. Um, so yeah, uh, these are selling fees, FBA fees, subscription, storage and transport. Storage and transport include the inventory storage costs and you know the inbound transportation, which uh, which you when you send your inventory to Amazon warehouse if you are a FBA seller. So that's these are those charges I had for the past for like three months. Um, so the next two ones I will come to back come to that in a minute. And next one is Amazon advertisement. So all the advertising costs for my private listing. Um, so I pay 20% VAT on that on top of that and I'll just put uh, the net amount again as you will automatically calculate 20% VAT on that. So let me uh, rephrase it to you that or tell you again that when you create this chart of accounts you need to give a standard or a default VAT code as well whether it's going to be no tax or 20% VAT or 5% or whatever or whether it's a reverse charge. So yeah, that's Amazon advertisement and next is Amazon sales. This is another Amazon sales account which has no VAT on that. These are those values which are basically, I think the, some of the, some of my products went to Ireland where there's no VAT charge and Jersey and other channel islands where there's no VAT applied. So these are those sales. So I think it's wise to when you look through your Excel sheet, you just need to make sure that you split these values so that you do not end up paying VAT on uh, VAT on top of uh, this value because uh, you have not collected any VAT on them why should you pay so yeah one so all of these transactions have done uh, total lots of total down here with a total VAT um, this is coming from 20% uh, of that of marketing expenses and this value is coming from the sales and associated uh, shipping credits etc um, so these then the, these are the two left. So the Amazon transfers are, these are also mentioned on uh, the Excel sheet you have and the business reports. Uh, it will tell you how much uh, money Amazon has transferred into your account. Uh, what you can do is you because that was so this is that receivable account that I've created on the Amazon and because Amazon is technically my customer and I'm expecting money from them. So what will happen is that uh, you post this as a debit entry and when uh, Amazon pays into your account uh, and when you match on to, to the bank feed you you say that uh, it's a, receive Amazon money received from Amazon it will enter as a cash debit and credit uh, to the account receivable account which is this 612 account number uh, this is my self created account this is, mm, this is a generic account receivable account as well which you can use for such transactions so yeah, um, this is what it is. I think once you, when you prepare your, when we are preparing your dinner, this is the amount you're left with. So this is the amount which you are still uh, due to Amazon. Uh, Amazon still will be paying you. Hence, it's Amazon transfer spending. It's more of like a receivable for Amazon, uh, which you are expecting to receive in the future period. So um, this is how um, if this channel is being prepared. Once you're ready, as I mentioned in the previous window, you can go right ahead and click on post and this will be posted like this. I've posted that on like 10-12 hours ago. So yeah, that's this is how Amazon account is. Amazon post, like uh, this is how you recognize your 
Amazon sales and all the associated costs. Um, so yeah, going back to uh, the manual journals, you can repeat the same procedure for another uh, player shopping, like uh, selling platform as well, like eBay and Etsy, um, and as well as your um, uh, any other like website sales, for example. Um, so yeah, once you've done that, what you need to do is you're basically done with what is required. You've pretty much um, covered everything unless you have any, any non-banking transaction, which I uh, would recommend that you should always transact through your bank account so that you'll be able to import all the relevant transactions and you don't end up with receipts and everything. And I think the whole purpose of making text digital is that you have everything um, available online um, how it is and then once you're done with this one you can come back you can go into this accounting section you click on VAT return um, I've already submitted my VAT return um, uh, which way in the case in what is this one here I can just show you I think there's nothing different uh, there's one still outstanding I need to do for one day um, which is due tomorrow uh, I mean, I'll show you this one first just to let you know how does it look like and then I'll show what I've already submitted and you can go through it as well together. So, I mean, I've not really prepared anything on to that against it, which is why there are no values. I'll show the values in the other one I'll, and basically I wanted to show you that this is how it is, that you click on submit to HMRC and it goes directly to and it will be submitted uh, into the zero account. So yeah, just coming back. So this is what I've submitted like an hour ago. Uh, um, yeah, and like I mentioned earlier, the video I couldn't. Uh, my mic was off, so all the hard work I done went down the drain. But anyway, uh, let's just review it. So. So once you've done the, once you have matched your transaction and once you have uh, posted the manual journals, this will, this is how it will appear. It will automatically calculate. You don't need to do anything else. The beauty of zero is that basically after that, everything is automated. So you'll have boxes like, um, uh, like with, the, with the, all the pieces of information, like uh, what's the number in each of these boxes. As you can see, in box five, this is how much VAT we need to pay. Um, I think in the normal VAT there's an adjustment account, adjust value, adjust box here as well. You can adjust if you think uh, the numbers aren't looking right. Um, so yeah, but in this particular case, since we already submitted it, I can't change anything. Um, and like I showed in the previous window, you can just click right away and submit to HMRC. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to uh, show you guys today and um, that's the end of this video now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave your comments in the comment section below and I'll respond to your question. Okay, thanks very much. All the best.